So welcome to another Alti Update webinar series. Um, so for those of you who don't know me, I'm Liam Valley. I'm one of customer success managers, um, working with those uh, educators in Australia and New Zealand. And joining me today, we have V, who's a product owner for LT, and um, potentially later on, we'll have our product manager joining in as well. And if you're not familiar with how to work with uh, Zoom webinars, you will hopefully see something like this. Uh, we've got options below. Um, so you've got the chat option. Um, just note that if you're using chat, um, there's the option to send chat to all panelists, so myself or V, or to all panelists and attendees. Uh, if you want to ask a question, um, you can use the Q&A function um, and V and I will see those and should have time to answer them. So anytime, feel free to yeah, pop something in the chat or if you have a question, pop that into Q&A. All right, so we'll get started. And first of all, yeah, I want to talk to the content library. So when you open up the content library um, in a course in LT, you'll be presented with a lot of different collections um, in different languages. And I'm assuming most of you are going to be teaching in English. So you may have come across the language filter, um, which was released a while ago. And you can choose uh, English as uh, the content you want to be teaching in. But there's some cool new filters that have come in. So one is around sampling so this allows you to choose the hardware or not hardware um, that uh, pertains to that lesson and i really want to focus on the alti sensors because alti sensors um, can now be ordered and to make sure that there's content that you can use with the alti sensors uh, our content team has yeah, released a bunch of content um, to help you yeah, so we've got uh, the Getting Started with LT, uh, which has been adapted now to include uh, sampling with LT sensors. So that just means that if you want students to know how to use the sensors um, generically, you can share these lessons with them. Uh, there's also the LT sensors for human physiology collection. So if you're familiar with uh, human physiology collection, a lot of these uh, modules will be um, familiar but the difference is, is now they're tailored to be using LT sensors rather than uh, the traditional power lab. And another filter, um, which is quite useful, is you've got uh, the ability to know what content your institution has subscribed to. So if you toggle on subscribed content, you'll see that these are the collections that I've allowed myself to have. Uh, but if you toggle on for valuation only, you'll see that there's uh, the collections that your institute has not yet subscribed to. Um, so this is premium content. Uh, so you can still import the content, but it is only going to be able to be viewed um, by educators and you can't edit or publish that. So this is actually a good time to talk about uh, yeah, the new chemistry collection. So this has yep, been released and uh, should point out though that it's focusing uh, at the moment on distance learning labs. Uh, the lab labs, <laughs> when person labs, uh, will be, as I understand, um, later on in the year around August. So I'll jump into one of those lessons. Um, even if you're not teaching chemistry, um, I think it's still useful to uh, look at these lessons because they've got quite a cool structure to them that you might be able to adapt for your own content, whether that's physiology, anatomy, um, or clinical based. So bear with me as I jump into one of the chemistry lessons. So uh, the first page, uh, probably pretty familiar um, to you if you've worked with ADI content before, it's an introduction page with learning objectives at the bottom. Uh, where it starts to differ is uh, with the challenge page. Um, note that the questions are more simple for lack of a better term, they're at the lower level of the Bloom's taxonomy. And there's also uh, bringing in uh, predictions on the challenge page as well and utilizing the alias function in LT um, to bring those predictions uh, back up to the students later on in the lesson. So there's the usual materials um, page and then the activity and analysis page. I won't go through all of these, but do want to start, yeah, again, bringing attention to 
um, the fact that yeah, bringing in more um, prediction to the lessons. So yeah, requiring students to kind of think ahead about what they're doing, not just going along following um, rote. They're not really uh, yeah thinking too deeply about what they're doing. So we want to try and break that. Oh. Hi, Damien. Uh, so Damien's just jump, jumped on. Damien's our uh, new product manager. All right, so going through, and again, um, just these predictions, which uh, have been aliased through from the challenge page, um, and then conclusions can be drawn um, based on the data that was collected throughout those experiments. A new page that's been um, introduced is yeah, this review and integration page. So again, those predictions and the conclusions that resulted from those brought in and then starting to get students to work at the higher levels of Bloom's taxonomy, um, where they're starting to yeah, compare and explain the results um, and do more comparisons um, and really yeah, try and draw more from uh, the data that they were collecting during the activities um, and analysis of those activities. And so, um, also trying to get students to reflect on yeah how they went about um, collecting this data and um, processes involved. Um, obviously, reflection very important for learning. There's also extension pages, uh, which can be very useful if you've got um, quite a spread of students in terms of their uh, speed in which they're working through these lessons, um, and a few. Yeah, want students to be um, properly challenged for a long enough time, you might need to add extension pages. Um, so this is what's been done in chemistry um, collection. As always, these can be removed um, if needed because all the content as always is fully customizable. Another new um, thing is around uh, this lab report page. So really helping students understand uh, what's required of them when they're creating a lab report. And then the ability for students to actually yeah, enter each of the key elements of a lab report. Again, those predictions um, can be referred back to um, on this page. And making sure that students yeah, start to think about uh, referencing their work as well, if need be. And uh, your uh, technician uh, and your labs will probably appreciate having a cleanup page as well added. So uh, quite simple, but um, it can really make yeah, everyone's jobs a bit easier for students to clean up after themselves. Uh, so that's yeah, one example lesson of um, yeah, chemistry lesson. And yeah, hopefully you can maybe draw some um, more generic pedagogical processes or methodologies um, from that, even if you aren't actually teaching chemistry. Just checking over no questions or chat at the moment. Um, just a reminder if you have come in that you can at any time put something in the chat or if you have any questions, feel free to ask those as well. Cool. Uh, if you are interested in actual chemistry content as well, we do have a page um, on our website dedicated to this. So if you want, you can sign up to the early, early adopters program. Um, but you can yep, be importing uh, the distance learning lessons um, if you just want to uh, have a play around and see if this is going to be valuable for your teaching. Cool. Uh, in terms of what else has come out from the content team, uh, that yeah, there's been a lot of bug fixes going on and I'm just going to take this time to point out that if you do want to know um, if some uh, bug has been fixed that you've really been hoping has been fixed um, or to reflect back on what new features have come out on our support site there are the release notes um, and you can see those here um, funny enough the release notes have actually been updated so released on the release notes for your meta um, so you can toggle down to see uh, the contents and features um, so the content obviously is the content and features is the platform itself. Um, if you want to go down, trip down nostalgia lane to see what happened in October 2020 in LT, um, you can quickly do that as well. Or you can filter for a particular term. Um, so it's pointing out that that's now available. 
Cool. And uh, finally, from the content team, I did mention at the last uh, webinar that they're working on the Endocrine Lab that's uh, coming to inclusion soon. So it's nearly finished um, and uh, planning on releasing it in the next month or two. Uh, if you are interested in the Endocrine Lab and you want to yeah, reach out, um, yeah, please, if you're on the webinar now, you can put your details in the chat and we can um, be in touch with you um, or you can reach out to us uh, if you're watching this later on uh, th probably through oh, myself out of the way uh, you likely you can reach out to us through our team feedback um, if you give your details and just say that you're interested um, or your local uh, ADI representative Cool. So now I'll start looking at some of the changes to the LT platform itself. And as I mentioned, we have the new filters that have come in. Um, and these are remembered as well. So you don't have to come back each time and say, you know, no, I don't want to teach in German. I want to be teaching in English. Um, so do it once and it's remembered, which is very useful. And it's all uh, keyboard accessible as well. Uh, what else is happening is there's been changes to the data panels. So you'll notice that if you have example data on by default, um, obviously the example data will be displaying. And down here, the buttons have been uh, tidied up a wee bit just to make it a bit clearer to students that you know they're viewing example data that they're not actually going to be um, able to start in your recording um, because they're viewing example data. But if students do want to be able to record their own data again, um, simply selecting data settings will bring up this uh, modal here and then can select new students data and then it reverts back to um, that more traditional data acquisition. And if you need to bring it back to example data, as always, you can hold down shift on the keyboard, click start and then use example data. So just trying to make that a bit um, cleaner and cleaner, cleaner and clearer for students. There's also been changes in the LT administration um, section. So if you're an LT um, instance administrator, you can access this area and you'll notice that there's been an addition um, here where there's now a staff option. Um, so this is at the moment, it's a lightweight feature, but it allows you to see all staff that are in an instance. There's been changes to course settings and so uh, if you weren't really familiar with this, there's the option to assign who students are able to contact. Um, and if you're not familiar with what that looks like from a student's perspective, I'll just show you here. So let's refresh the page, bring it up. So as a student, there's the option to contact the course administrator. Um, and that is, yeah, dictated by whoever in the settings for that course um, is chosen. If you and your colleagues really just can't be bothered um, dealing with students anymore and you just want to be like, no, you can't contact me, which I'm sure none of you will do, um, you can just change it to no contacts there. Um, so that removes that option from the drop down. Uh, there's been changes also in the grading interface. Uh, so a few maybe 1 a.m. in the morning questioning uh, yeah, what you're doing with your life. Um, grading that and you accidentally press one twice to make 11, uh, then yeah, it will just give you a little warning saying, hey, maybe have a cup of coffee, go to sleep, do it in the morning. Um, but yeah, also you have entered uh, a grade that is exceeding the maximum grade for that question. Um, obviously, if you do need to change the maximum grade, you can do so. Um, here as well. So maybe that was meant to be out of 20. Um, now, you know, that's appropriate. So nice little change there just to help you out. Uh, in line with making sure that LT is um, continuing to be as accessible as possible, there's been changes to the upload and annotate panel. So you'll notice that there's a couple of new color options here for students. Uh, and the colors that are there now um, are more aligned uh, to be uh, accessible for those with color blindness. So that's a cool change there. And that's it for a quick whirlwind um, overview of what's uh, been released in the last couple of months for LT. 
Uh, as always, though, I'm happy to answer any generic questions about anything talked about or just out in general. Um, make most of us being on this on this call. Uh, so if you do have any questions about LT, feel free to pop them into the Q&A and we can address those now. Um, or we can follow up later if they're a bit more meaty questions or niche. So give you guys maybe a moment just to pop that in. I don't want to quickly end the call as you're halfway through entering a question. Uh, pretty quiet. Either all that you just all whizzes with LT or the classic, you know, no one wants to put the hand up. Oh, there we go. All right. So Neil. Um, Neil asked, uh, yeah, nice to have a staff listing in the instance admin. Can you select to upload a list or group to a particular lesson? Uh, so Neil, I'm assuming uh, you're referring to uh, bulk uploading a staff list uh, to a course uh, like you can with students where you can upload um, a CSV file with the uh, cohort, the student cohort. At the moment, uh, no, that's not possible. Um, so it is still a manual process um, of individually inviting uh, each staff member, um, for those who aren't aware of the process, um, it's under staff accounts, invite, and yeah, you can put the details in one at a time. But yeah, I can definitely sympathize with that, Neil, uh, particularly if you have dozens of uh, yeah, colleagues that need to be added to that course. Uh, one way uh, to try and make that a bit easier um, is you can create uh, essentially a, like a template course uh, and you can add all the staff members um, or potential staff members to that course. And then every time that you're creating a new course, instead of going through the normal route of clicking courses and creating it that way, what you can do is um, you can go to that uh, template course that you've um, set up that has all the staff in it. And when you go to settings copy a course there's the option to select the staff um, so that might be slightly quicker way or work around um, yeah if you have generally the same staff that need access to a course um, that instead of creating the course and inviting them all individually you can invite them all to one course and then copy that course um, so it might save you a few clicks there uh, so that potentially is one way um, that you could yeah, get around that limitation but yeah uh, with uh, Damien on the call, who's product manager. Yeah, it's a good, good person to be seeing or hearing that feedback. So thank you, Neil. Um, oh, so any other questions or comments before we wrap up and give you guys 10 minutes back of your day? I think that might be it. Cool. Uh, well, yeah, if you have any yeah, suggestions as to what you would like uh, future webinars um, to address, um, by all means, feel, reach, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we're just looking um, for feedback as to how we can better provide content for you guys to make your lives a bit easier. Um, and if you have any feedback about our tea in general, don't forget there's the option um, in the drop down there to provide feedback um, as needed. So with that, I might... Uh, end the call and yeah wish you guys a yeah, good rest of your day evening mornings whatever it might be ciao